Are we planning on buying a superstar in this summer window? In today's report, I'll be discussing the latest news on Leao, Enzo Fernandez, Awesome Hen and Odyssey as well too. We're getting closer now to the summer window and as you guys know, our club does not play around during the summer. I'm expecting some shocks and surprises, so let's get ready, let's gear up for what's set to be an epic, epic summer. So my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Sit back, relax, hit that like button, share your thoughts and opinions, and let's get straight into the news. We start things with Enzo Fernandez, and as we already know, Enzo has had some hernia problems during the season, and currently, he is hoping to get surgery to tackle the issue. Now, we have a report today that came out from Argentina, and... Is there a bit of a debate going on behind the scenes surrounding whether Enzo can have his surgery now or must postpone it for later? Now the report mentions that Enzo Fernandez preferably would like to have his hernia operation now because he wants to get ready for the Copa America so he can represent Argentina. On the other hand though, Pochettino isn't too keen on losing and missing out on another midfield player considering all the injuries we have this season. Now we can still play for a European spot and you'd imagine that Enzo Fernandez will still be important for Pochettino. So, listen, there's still a few weeks and months ahead, but it's very interesting to see whether we give into Enzo's demands. Now, in my opinion, I care about the long term. Yes, I know securing European football would be good, but, you know, what's to say that Enzo breaks down before the season ends? Because I don't like when players aren't in full optimum condition, where... In states like this, they are more susceptible to picking up further risks. I think it's been obvious for a while that Enzo has been suffering with something because at the start of the season, this guy was eating up yards for fun. But as the season progressed, more reports came out suggesting that he had been carrying knocks and injuries, but he was still playing through the pain, which does tell you his commitment to playing for us. But naturally, you won't be able to play your best football over time. Now, we're still able to use him, but... I get a bit worried now every time I see Enzo starting games because I just think to myself, if this guy is not fully fit or optimum, who knows what could happen to him in the future. I think for us in the long term, if Enzo gets this operation, if he has a successful tournament with Argentina and the Copa America, he comes back into next season with new form, new confidence, and that sets us up better for next season. I think some of the criticism around Enzo has been a bit harsh considering that he has been playing through so many injuries and issues already this season. When we see him fully fit, you see how his passing comes to life, you see how his tackling comes to life, his skill comes to life. When's the last time you've seen Enzo play a Chavela pass? When you see Enzo spamming Chavela passes for fun, you know that this guy is fully fit and fully confident. And that's the Enzo that I want to see ready for next season. So where do you guys fall in this debate? Do you think Enzo should get this operation now? Or do you think that the team and our needs come first and you get this during the summer? Tell us below. Now we discuss a big story that came out from Team Talk. It's a Team Talk exclusive and they reveal that we are set to fiercely battle Manchester United for the signing of Michael Olise. They report that Joe Shields behind the scenes is pushing our efforts to capture Olise during the summer, but it's seen as a very hard move considering that Man United see Olise as the face of a new generation. They plan to rebuild their squad heavily this summer, and since their takeover by Sir Jim Ratcliffe, who bought the minority stake in Manchester United, you know, he is hiring the right people and figures to try and make United. You know, a big giant in this game again. The report mentions that Olise is now ready for the next step in his career. And I was saying this throughout the summer. I mean, he ended last season for Palace in such great form. I mean, he was getting assists for days, but it felt like he could go a different level by becoming that match winner, by scoring goals. And since returning back from injury during November, he's been doing that. And throughout 2024, he has been one of the most informed players in the league. He's got seven goals, four assists and around, what, 10 starts and four sub appearances. And with the football he plays, his dead balls, his skills, he makes moments happen from nothing. I mean, they're the type of players traditionally that do play for the best clubs. And I'm always going to feel like we absolutely fumble things when it came to signing him last summer. There was some context around things. Yes, on one hand, of course, Odyssey was maybe a bit put off by the long-term contract that he'd have to sign. I don't think it was that deep though, 
But I understand where he might have some concerns because obviously that could tie you down on a certain contract and a certain wage for too many years. But considering that Cole Palmer is set to, uh, you know, receive a lucrative contract extension that's going to give him a dramatic pay rise, it does go to show that if you do perform, this club will notice that and they will pay you accordingly. So I'd like to think that this summer gives us some confidence in that sense. But ultimately, you know, Crystal Palace were very unhappy behind how we attempted to approach Odyssey. That was one of the main reasons behind why we didn't sign him last summer. Now, Crystal Palace was set to threaten us by, you know, taking us to a tribunal to complain about our approach to Odyssey. And personally, I think this all fueled from the fact that Lewis Hall was set to sign for Crystal Palace on loan. And then ultimately, during the 11th hour, we said no to the deal. We pushed him to Newcastle because we were planning on making, you know, profit off his sale. And I think that's why Crystal Palace didn't play ball. We could have signed him for his release clause. And I just think that it was such a big loss. I remember the hype last summer when we all felt like Odyssey was set to sign because we all know the type of player he is, the source he has. And that's the type of X-Factor quality that this team is lacking. Fingers crossed we can do something, but I'll be honest with you guys, I've got my doubts. I think that United will give this guy whatever money he wants and just gas it any way they can. And Man City also see him as the successor to Rian Mahrez. You know, with talks that Bernardo Silva is set to leave City this season. City will find it easier to entice players to sign for them now because there's going to be spots available and open in the team. And Odyssey will think to himself, if I'm signing for Manchester City, I'm signing for a legacy club. Imagine the assists I'm giving to Holland for days. You know, the, imagine my stock, how that's going to boost my, you know, national team hopes. That could be a big career move. But ultimately, you can't forget that during last summer, he was keen on signing for us. He was keen to return back to Cobham, a club in which, you know, we helped produce and raise him and I don't know fingers crossed we can get some some kind of European football right because we become more enticing that way and obviously you'd imagine that we aren't that attractive to certain players now as they're seeing how our current season form is going so I think a big end to the season will definitely help us and I think that if we continue to sign the right players continue to sell the projects correctly and accordingly I don't think it's impossible I just see it as incredibly difficult. Now, rumours suggest that since Odyssey signed that four-year contract extension, there was a new release clause inserted in that extension, and that value is £70 million, which is a lot of money. Um, I wonder how keen Palace would be to negotiate with us. I think the only thing that could work in our favour is if we could offer players in exchange. I think we definitely have talents. Obviously, you're looking at guys like Madweke, could Khans go on loan to Palace for the season, especially if uh, Eze was set to leave? It will be incredibly hard, but one of the reasons why I'm even discussing this story is because we've known since the end of the summer window that we have plans to sign like a superstar, you know, X-factor quality attacking player. That's not necessarily signing a big money forward. That's signing someone in the final third that can be that difference maker. And I think if we had a player of that dimension this season for us, I think we're higher up the table and I think he translates how we play better. And personally, for me, Odyssey would be my dream signing for the right hand side. Imagine Odyssey on the right, Palmer in the middle and Kunku on the left hand side. Boy, we could do some serious things next season, but I don't want to get too carried away, you guys. How do you feel about this story? Do you think this deal could happen? Let us know your thoughts below. And now we discuss another interesting report that came out from Italy. And essentially, the report mentions that AC Milan don't actually see any of their players as untouchable. Meaning that if the right offer, if the right money was presented, any player could be sold for the right price. And that even includes players like Rafael Leal. Now, we know that he signed a new contract extension and that release clause is 175 million euros. But in today's market, no club in the world will be paying that money up front to be able to sign him. That release clause is there just to safeguard Leao's position and future at Milan for the unforeseeable future. But I'm sure if you negotiate a very high fee, you could possibly talk to him. And I guess ultimately it depends if Leao is ready to leave AC Milan. Now, for myself, I think he's one of the top three wingers in world football. And I think if you're someone that is probably going to go on Who's Schooled or FB Ref to maybe check his stats for this season, 
you're going to feel like, what's going on? I mean, you know, seven goals, uh, your eight goals, seven assists. These aren't big numbers. I'm expecting like 20 goals. I'm expecting mad numbers. But you have to watch Leao play week in, week out to understand what he does for teams on the fields. You know, he makes moments happen from nothing. You know, if you're in a losing position, he can make you a winner. He's incredibly difficult to control and contain. You know, that mixture of ridiculous strength, but alongside that, the poise, the elegance, the first touch, the dribbling, and just his decision-making in the final thirds. Uh, he adds that imagination. Uh, he has the creativity alongside the finishing prowess. The funny thing is, when we signed Mudrik, I think we were kind of hoping that we'd be able to buy like a cheaper layout. Now, bear with me. The point I'm making is that Mudrik this season has kind of struggled a little bit because with how we play, we focus our play down the right-hand side and we free up the left flank. And I'm thinking that Pochettino has been hoping that Mudrik would take full control and license of having that freedom down the left flank where, you know, we're creating that separation for him. We're creating the opening in the spaces for him. But unfortunately, Mudrik just doesn't have that football brain just yet at this level. And he doesn't fully take advantage of his skill set in the most optimal manner. Teams like Brian use Matoma in a way like this. Uh, Vinicius Luna famously plays this way for Real Madrid. And Leal also plays this way for AC Milan, where all teams share the fact that they free up that left side for their star wingers. So system-wise and tactically, Leal would be an instant fit, a seamless fit. But obviously... You know, this is superstar money, superstar wages, and things get very more unlikely without European football. Now, I don't have big hopes for either him or let's say in my personal opinion, but I do believe that the club are still hoping to sign that big attacking player this summer. I wonder who we turn towards, who could be that player for us. We missed out on getting Odyssey and Kudos. They could have been perfect for this squad alongside Palmer and many others. But to really push on now and go to that next level, this is the type of profile we need to add to our squad. So if anything, I like that the ambitions are high because we need them to be high if we want to attract players like this. Leal was one of the first players that Clear Lake hoped to buy and we negotiated for time. You know, Mudrik was the backup option after that. So let's see what happens. And ultimately, we have to wait and see how much money and funds we actually have to spend this summer. So my friends, lay out news out of the way. Let's start end things by discussing another small update surrounding Victor Simon. Now this story came from Italian journalist Rudy uh, Giletti and you know what? He does report and confirm something that I have been saying about Victor throughout this year and that's the fact that before we can even address signing him, we must free up exits. And once we free up exits, the plan will be to negotiate buy him under his release clause because there's no way Napoli will be getting anyone who's offering up 120, 130 million euros in one go. It's not going to happen. Now, in previous reports, I discussed the fact that we are hoping to negotiate a fee lower than that release clause and we want to try and find a fee around 100 million euros for Victor. Paris and Germain make things very hard with Mbappe now set to sign for Real Madrid. They have Mbappe funds and they also have additional funds on top. They've made Osman their number one priority and they can afford to get this deal done. So my fear would be if we are stalling our efforts to sign Osman because we need to sell first to raise funds, by the time we do that, could Paris Saint-Germain buy them from our hands? It wouldn't be a surprise. You know, players want to safeguard and sort out their futures immediately. But I'm going to hope and pray that because of, you know, Victor's love for the club, him being a supporter and the fact that he can create his own legacy here, in the form of his, you know, like footballing idol in Didier Drogba. Hopefully that gives us the advantage where Victor will keep that patience because cryptically we know that from his agent and from Victor himself, he knows exactly what club he's signing for for next season. But time will tell whether that's us or whether that's Paris Saint-Germain. I think this explains why we are also assessing alternatives to Victor in the market in case we aren't able to afford him and that's why Seshko and that's why Jokoresh are two other strong alternatives over Osimhen. Because there's no way we're signing two strikers alongside Nico and alongside everyone else. So, you know, it's definitely going to be a big one to look uh, forward to. With Nico's struggles up front, especially we saw that against Man City, the club may feel, listen, if we had a victor, a, a guy who scores in the big games, who has that temperament, who's world-class aerially, 
you know, how many more points we get this season because statistically you know we, we do rank like top six for most offensive and attacking stats and with more experience and quality I think we get more points because Premier League is a very hard league but you're not going to be able to like football your way into scoring goals all the time you know sometimes players must take responsibility they must take their half chances you know they must make moments from nothing that's how a lot of the big teams win and that's why a lot of the big teams sign the best players because they have a better chance of producing those moments that can help you achieve your objectives lift silverware get trophies and all that good stuff i do think that nico will be one of the next leading forwards in the future because the guy's raw talent is just so good because again we can't dismiss what he's doing against capable defenses this season just by playing with his pressing his dribbling ability his link up the back flicks how many imagine if like an ollie watkins for example had the skill of a nico jackson you're looking at someone who's absolutely clear nico has that skill he just doesn't have that finishing experience yet. So I do feel like we can't dismiss that because he is still someone who's capable of growth. But ultimately, that growth may come in the next one, two years. And could it help us to sign a guaranteed striker right now where who knows in the future if even Nico is good enough to force himself playing up front alongside an awesome hen or whoever we sign up front. So there's definitely food for thought in my friends. And I guess on that note, I'm going to wrap things up now and keep things moving. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's videos. Of course, you'll see me later on for match day against Arsenal. Fingers crossed we secure a result against them. And my friends, enjoy the rest of your day. So on that note, I'm Nini FC, the Cis Blue Lions TV. See you guys later. Cool.